Hello everyone. Uh, this is a lecture on probability. We start by defining terms. Uh, probability is a measure of chance. The definition of probability is a simple one. So on a scale of uh, 0 to 1, we measure the likelihood that an event will occur. Uh, we define an event as any occurrence or happening. Uh, a baby boy being born is an event and a toss, a toss coin landing with a tail is also an event. So we define a sample space as a collection of all events under this course. So all the events that come up under this situation is referred to as a sample space. Probably that an event cannot occur is zero. Remember we say on the scale of zero to one, so zero is the least. So probably that an event cannot occur is zero. Example is probably that the time will stop. We are sure that time cannot stop. Time keeps on coming. It's uh, 10 o'clock now, it will soon be 11. So probably time cannot stop. So probably that time stops is zero. And probably that an event is starting to happen is one. That's the upper part. The maximum probability is one. So when you are sure that an event is going to happen, then probability is one. Example is a probably that tomorrow will come is one. We are very certain that tomorrow will come. Whether anyone witness it or not, it's, it's certain to come. So the approaches to probability, there are two approach to probability, two approaches to probability. Uh, the experimental approach defines probably that an event will occur is that the number of times that event occur, event E occurs, all over total number of outcomes. So we carry out an experiment or an investigation. Number of times that uh, that a particular event occur divided by the number of uh, total outcomes of that experiment. You know, we say probability is a, is a proper fraction. It's between 0 and 1, so it must be a proper fraction. So the numerator must always be smaller than the denominator. In the theoretical probability that event E will occur is the number of possible times event E can occur all over total number of events in the sample space number of possible times that particular event over the number of events in the sample remember sample space we say is the total number of events in there all the events in under the situation under the circumstance so example here so what is probably that an suv will pass through a two gate an suv is sports utility vehicle so the event e this time around is a suv pass through a two gate so probably that an SUV pass through the two gates is number of times SUV pass through the two gates all the total number of vehicles that pass through the two gates. And so that's the experimental approach. You know, so how many SUV pass through the two gates and how many uh, total number of vehicles that pass through the two gates. So how many of the total number of vehicles that pass through the two gates are SUVs. And you get the uh, probably that an SUV will pass through the two gates. Another example here, yeah, what's probability that um, the other or the last one is an experimental approach to probability. This experimental approach. So in the, this other example, what probability that a pregnant woman gives birth to a baby boy? This time around, the event E is a birth of a baby boy. And the sample space here is a B or G. And under this situation, the only situation that comes with either she gives birth to a baby boy or a baby girl. So the number of events, uh, number of E is 1. There's only one B in the in that sample space, and the total number of events in sample is two. Probability that E uh, will occur, and the baby boy will born is one over two. Uh, so this theoretical approach, you know, the possible number of boys is one, and the all the total number of samples is uh, two. So this theoretical approach to probability. So let's look at some sample spaces. So for tossing of a one fair coin, the sample space is either head or tail. So the sample is H or T. So the number of this in the sample is two. So tossing of two fair coins, the sample space is either head, 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 tail, tail, head or tail. That means the first one shows head, the second one to shows head. The first one shows head, the second shows tail. The first shows tail, the second shows head. Both of them show tail. So the number in the sample space is four. So for the tossing of three fair coins, the sample space is either head, head, head. Head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, tail, all the three shoes, tail. So the number in the sample space is uh, eight. 
So let's look at the throwing of a of dice. If you are that a die is a cube, a cube has six faces with uh, uh, so in a die each of the face of the cube is uh, numbered one to six. So the sample space is that when you throw a die, if you are that if you are in the sense that uh, no face has uh, advantage over the other, each face has equal opportunity of being shown thrown up. So each of the face one, two, three, four, five, six. So the sample space has six. So the number in the sample space is also six. So when you throw two uh two daffia dice, the number in sample is 36. So either the first one shows one and the second shows one, the first one shows one, the second one shows two, one, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. And then the second line, that means the first one shows two, the second one shows one. That's two, one, two, 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 three, up to uh both of the faces are showing six. So the number in the sample space of throwing of two fair dice is uh, 36. So let's look at this worked example. So if your coin is tossed three tries, so what is the probability that there will be no only one head, uh, there will be no tail, there will be two heads, there will be at least two heads, then you will be at most two tails. So for the first one, uh, the event E is only one head appears. This is where only one head appears when you have head, tail, 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 head, tail, 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 head. So there are three of those so situations when you have Two heads, so three, and the number of sample space. Remember, for the tossing of three coins, the number of sample space is eight. So probably that event E will occur. That means two heads showing up is three over eight. So probably that there will be no tail. That's when we have head, head, head. Probably of head, 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 head. So all the three showing head is only one of them when there is no tail there. Check the sample. The only one when there is no tail. You can check the sample space. Remember the sample space for for. Besides, all of them have tail except this where we have all the three showing head. So tail is in each and every one other ones. So uh so it's only one, so one over eight. So probably that there will be two heads. So you have head, head, tail, head, tail, head, and tail head. That's three of them when there are two, three heads. And when there are two heads, there are three of them. So the probably that there will be two heads will be three over eight. It is the number of the sample space. So by that there'll be at least two eggs. At least mean that two at least two means two or more. That means two above or more than two. So you cannot be probably there'll be two eggs or three eggs. Probably there will be there the number of times you have two eggs is three. And the number of times you have three eggs, that's eight, 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 that's one. So uh, now three plus one that's four. So probably that there was going to be at least two eggs before over eight. That means four out of uh, all the eight in this number of samples we so you reduce that to the lowest and that's one over two then probably that there'll be at most two tails at most mean that highest is two that means two or below anything to so it's gonna be zero tail one tail or two tails so if we check the sample space again number of times we have we have zero head that will be uh when we add it is that's uh one we have one head here that's another one making two one area three four five six seven so number of times when you have at least one head at least two heads uh, at most two heads that means two zero head uh one head and uh, two heads so that will be seven of them uh, the only play when you don't have head at all is uh, only one so at most two heads that will be seven over eight seven of them one time when you have no head, three times when you have one tail, and three times when you have two tails. So three plus three plus one, that will be seven over eight. When eight is the total number of uh, events in the sample space. So the, uh, uh, the another question here, two fair dice are thrown once. So find the probability that one, the two numbers shown are even, so one of the two numbers is a perfect square and three the two numbers are equal for the sum of the two numbers is uh, at least is le is less than eight then the fifth part of the question is sum of the two numbers is uh, at least nine so let's look at that you still remember the sample space for train of two dice uh, so when the two numbers are even so one one you, you won't talk of the first row because one of the number must be you see you, 
uh, is held in the first row. So in the second row, when the two numbers are even, you have 2, 2, that's 1, 2, 4, that's 2, 2, 6, that's 3. Then on the fourth row, 4, 2, that's a 4, 4, 4, that's 5, 4, 6, that's 6, and uh, 6, 2, that's 7, 6, 4, that's 8, and 6, 6, that's 9. So you have 9 times when the two numbers are showing uh number of so let event e equals to two numbers are even so the number of time when the two numbers are even is nine and the number of samples so is 36 so it's probability that uh, the two is uh, the two numbers shown up in train of the two dice is uh, even is nine over 36 and when you reduce that to the lowest time it gives you one all over four then the second example second part is when one of the number is perfect is perfect uh, a perfect number is a number that you multiply by the number by itself and it gives you that number. So 1 times 1 is 1 and 2 times 2 is 4. So the only two perfect numbers in this instance are 1 and 4. You know, a perfect number, you find the square root of that number, it gives you a whole number. So the square root of 1 is 1 the square root of 4 is uh, 2. So only 4 and 1 qualifies for a perfect number. So yeah, when one of the number is perfect number, so 1. So one one will not be there because uh, the two are perfect numbers. The sequence when one of them is perfect number. So one two, uh, one three that's two. One four two will not be qual will not qualify because uh, one of them is uh, both of them are perfect number. So you only have when one of them are perfect number. So you have one two one one three two one five four one six uh one six one two is one one two. So when you count all of them. When only one of them are perfect numbers, so you're going to be having uh, 16 of them. So it's, there are 16 of them when they are perfect, when the number is perfect, when one of the number is perfect. So 16 over 36, uh, number of samples will have reduced to 4 over 9, reduced to lowest term. So I read that when the two numbers are equal, as you have 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, so that will be 6 of them. So 6 over number of samples, which is 36, that will give us 1 all over 6. Then probably that the sum is less than 8. You can create another table for the sum of the faces. The sum of the faces, sum of the faces in train of two dice. When you have 1, 1, then the sum is 2. When you have two, 1, 2, the sum is 3. And so on. Uh, 1, 3, the sum is 4. So that the last sum, when you have 6, 6, the sum is uh, 12. So you look at probability when the sum is uh, when the sum is less than 8. So when the sum is less than 8, that means from 7 downward. When the sum is 7, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And when the sum is uh, 6, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you have 6 plus 5, that's 11. When the sum is 5, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 11 plus 4, that's 15. And when the sum is uh, 4, 1, 2, 3, that's 18. You have 15 plus 3, that's 18. Then when the sum is 3, that's 2. 18 plus that's 20. Then when the sum is 2, that's 1, making 21. So when the sum is strictly less than 8, I mean 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. So that will be uh, when the sum is less than 8, that will be 21 of them over 36. And reduce that to the lowest term, that will be 7 over 12. Then when the sum is at least 9, when the sum is... Uh, the question is find the one the sum of the two numbers is at least nine. So that's probably that is greater than or equal to nine. I mean it can be nine, it can be uh, ten, it can be eleven, it can be twelve. You know, twelve is the highest sum. So when the sum is at least nine, that's a nine and above. So when it is nine, it is one, two, three, four. And when it is ten, it is three, four plus it has seven. When it is eleven, it is two, seven plus that's nine. And when it is 12, it is 1, that's 10. So when it's at least 9, that is 9 and above. Probably that sum is greater than or equals to 9. That's 10 over 36. And uh, reduce that to the lowest time, we have 5 over 18. So let's look at another one. Another example, if your coin is tossed, and if your dice is, if your dice, uh, if your coin is tossed, and if your dice is uh, are thrown, if your coin and if they are thrown, together okay if your coins and if your if, if your coin uh, is told and if your die are thrown together what is probability of getting a head and an even number to a tail and a prime number so this is the sample space 
that means you throw a coin and you also toss a die so that means you can have head and one head and two head and three head and three four head and five if you still remember probably the uh, number of possible counties that's going to be 12 the number of sample space will be 12 uh, you can do it. you are doing the two together at the same time someone like head throwing off a die and it tossing off a coin simultaneously so so the number of sample space is 12 there one uh so probability of showing head and even the number of times you have head and even is when you have head and two head and four head and six so that's a three out of the 12 so that's one over four uh the probability of when you have the tail and the prime the prime number is number that is this is only one and itself the, the prime numbers we have here are two three and a five so when you have a tail and a prime so you can have a t and t2 uh, t3 and t5 so there are three of them so 3 over 12 uh, so they, are, they reduce that to 1 over 4 so, so let's look at addition of probabilities uh, probability that one event or other events will occur result in addition of the probabilities so in example 3 now what probability that in the last example you get what probability of getting a head and an even number or a tail and a prime number so head and even number probably of getting a head and even number we got it to be one over four probably of getting a tail and a prime number is also one over four probably of getting either of them so you just count together uh, that's three over twelve plus uh, three the uh, head and even number you have three situations then tail and even number tail and prime number you have three situations so we had the 3 plus that is 6 over 12. So if we had the two probabilities together, uh, 6 over 12 is uh, 3 over 12 plus 3 over 12, that's 1 over 2. So that means uh, each of them, and, and head and even number will give 3. A tail and prime number is also 3. So you just had the two probabilities together. So probability addition value when one event or the other event can happen. So the key word here in addition value is or, watch out for when you have or. I mean, it's either this or this, then you add the probabilities together. Let's look at this another example. Sometimes it's not that easy just adding like that. When two fair dies are thrown, what probability that uh, in the two faces shown, the two numbers are even or one of the numbers is a perfect square? See the example as then we show when the two numbers are even. We show that probability is a 9 over 36. There are 9 times when the two number faces are even. And when the uh, one of the numbers is a perfect square. One of the numbers is 21. So if you add 9 plus 21, that will give you 30. But the result it will not be 30. If you look at the table, if you count the number of times, uh, number of when you have even number, when the two numbers are even. So we draw the table for it now. Uh, when the two numbers are even, uh, we're showing that in a purple color. When the two numbers are even, that's Purple color 2, 2, 2, 6, uh, 4, 4. Uh, the red color 4, 4 and uh, 6, 2 and uh, 6, 6. Uh, two, two, the red color is when the two of them are happening together. When one of the numbers is a, is a perfect number. Uh, that's, we are showing that one in yellow color. Uh, but the one we are showing in red color is when the two things, the two, events are happening together that means that uh, the two numbers are even and one of the one of the two numbers is also a perfect number like 4 2 now the two numbers are even and one of the number is a perfect number 4 is perfect number there 2 is not a perfect number so one of the number is a perfect number here yeah? uh 2 4 2 one of the number is perfect number and the two faces are the two numbers are even the same thing 6 4 so there are four of them so if you add 9 plus 30 you're going to get the wrong answer because there are only 21 of them if you count all the shade colored points here there are going to be 21 21 of them so the only times so the probability that uh, the number of events that uh, two numbers are even and one number is 21 over 36 so it's going to be 9 over 36 that's when the numbers are even plus 16 over 36 when the numbers are one of the numbers is perfect number just as we got in the previous example, 
Then minus 4 over 36 is when the two events are happening together. That's the one we show in red. When the two events are happening together, we show them in red. So you now subtract because you've counted them once. So you have to subtract them again because they are occurring twice. So in general, you now say let E1 and E2 be two non-mutually exclusive events. Then probability that event 1 or you use union. You now use set notations. All what we did in set now is going to come up now. E1, union, E2, that event 1 or event 2 will happen because of probably that E1 will happen, probably that E2 will happen, minus probably that E1 and, we now use intersection for E1 and E2 will happen. So, uh, this formula should look, should look familiar to you. This is the formula we use for union of two sets. Actually, all the formulas we use in analytical, uh, in an, in analytical formula we use on that set, all of them applies here. Only that we'll, here we'll be dealing with uh, fractions, proper fractions. So we can use any of the formulas. Uh, all the formula in that will be applicable here. And you can see, as well use the Venn diagram. So uh, probability of E1 interaction with E2 does when the two events happen together. So let's define some terms now. We use the term there, mutually exclusive events. So let's define what the mutually exclusive event is. So mutually exclusive events are two events, two or more events are said to be mutually uh, exclusive, are said to be mutually exclusive if they cannot occur simultaneously. Remember in the last one, we said they are non mutually exclusive. Remember in that example, in that definition in general, we said when led to be non mutually exclusive event. But this time around, when to say events are mutually exclusive, that means that the two cannot occur simultaneously. Example is you cannot be eating and be talking at the same time. So the two is it's impossible to eat and talk at the same time. So if E1 and E2 are mutually exclusive events, then we write that probability of E1 intersection with E2 is zero. That means the two cannot happen together at the same time. So mutually as under definition here is mutually exclusive and exhaustive events. Uh, this is when two or more events cannot occur simultaneously and one of them must occur. So uh, that means they are exhaustive. One of them must always occur. All the sample in the, they contain all the sample space and uh, they are not, they can occur together. Example, in the birth of a child, the two events are a boy or a girl and the two events are mutually exclusive. They can occur together. You can't give birth to a one child, a birth of one child, and two of them will be either, it, can, it has to be either a boy or a girl. We say birth of a child, not part of a twins. So you can't give birth to one child and the child will be a boy and a girl. It's not possible. It can't be both boy and girl. That's how it is. And it must either be either a boy or a girl. So it's mutually uh, exclusive and, uh, it's, and, it mutual, and also exhaustive. Uh, you have all the situation in it. So let two events E1 and E2 be mutually exclusive and uh, exhaustive events. Then probability of E1 or E2 equals probability of E1 plus probability of E2 equals to probability of which equals to 1. Remember, if they are mutually exclusive, probability of E1 intersection with E2 will be 0. So E1 intersection with E2 will not up, come up here. So when they are mutually exclusive for an exhaustive event, the addition will be 1 and there won't be joint probability of in there won't be intersection of probability. So let's look at this uh, another independent event. Two or more events are said to be independent uh, if the occurrence of one of each uh, two or if the occurrence of each of the event has nothing to do with the other. Uh, when event occurred, the occurrence of one event uh, uh, it has nothing to do with other event. Example is in writing two or more examinations, uh, examination papers, uh, the pass or fail in one exam has nothing to do with the pass or fail in the other exam. Uh, like uh, when two events are mutually uh, independent now, so when they occur together, the probability of E1 in tangent with E2 equals to probability of E1 times E2. So when when you pass this exam, you write this exam, the probability of you passing it 
write another example how many of you passing it they are both independent events the passing of one exam and the other exam are independent so this leads us to multiplication of probabilities so probability that one event and other events or more events will occur simultaneously result in a multiplication of uh, of their probabilities example is that a couple will have a boy and a girl is probably that uh, the probability of boy multiplied by probability of girl so that's half times half a couple will have two children in the two children that we have right of having a, a boy is half right of having a girl is also half so right that we have a boy and a girl in the two children i mean the two children that they're going to be having is half times half which is one all over four then probability of passing an exam if probability of passing an exam is uh, 0.3 then the probability of passing it as second attempt that means in the first attempt it is a failure so first attempt since the event is mutually uh, exhaustive that means uh, if you don't pass you fail so 1 minus 0.3 will give you 0.7 so 0.7 times 0.3 that will be 0.21 so you fail the first one you pass the second one the failure is 0.7 and that's 1 minus 0.3 because the events are mutually exhaustive, mutually exclusive and exhaustive. So 1 minus, once it is mutually exclusive and exhaustive, you just subtract 1 from one of the events, you get the other event. You sometimes you say that will refer to as complement in set, the complement of that event. Uh, you look at the universal set as the sample space now, so the total number of uh, events that can happen. So or you can use the knowledge of set now. Uh, is applicable here so uh, let's look at this work examples here if e1 and e2 are two non-mutually exclusive events such so that probability of e1 is 0.55 probability of e2 is 0.49 and then probability of e1 interacting with e2 is 0.25 find one the probability of e1 union or e2 that's union probability of e1 complement in tangent with E2, E1 complement will be 1 minus E1. Remember that complement. So probability of 1, probability of E1 union E2 from the formula we get for addition of two probabilities when they are non-mutually exclusive. So that probability of E1 plus probability of E2 minus probability of E1 intersection with E2. They are non-mutually exclusive. So probability of E1 in tangent E2, of course, is, uh, is not 0. So you add 0 0.55 plus 0.42 minus 0.25. So it gives you 0.75. Uh, probability of a E1 complement in tangent with E2. Uh, probability of E1 complement, E complement, that means that uh, probability of E2 minus probability of E1 in tangent with E2. Uh, remember the formula in sets, in analytical formula in sets. That's why you, you want to find the uh, event E2 only. That means if it is 2 only will be E2 minus intersection of E1 and E2. So E2 is 0.49 minus 0.25. That will be 0.24. Uh, use the knowledge of sets and you get it right. So this is another example. Probability if E1 and E2 are two independent events, so the probability of E1 in union E2 is 0.7. 0 and probability of E1 is 0.45 but to find probability of E2 remember when they are independent events then probability of E1 union uh, probability of E1 intercept E2 will be probability of E1 times probability of E2 so here yeah, probability of E1 union E2 equals probability of E1 plus probability of E2 then probability of E1 intersection of E2 since they are independent will now be probability of E1 times probability of E2 so you now have 0 0.70 equals to 0.45 substitute plus probability of E2. You don't know that yet. Minority of 0. Minority of uh, E1, which is 0.45, uh, modular value of E2 that we don't know. So we just uh, we take 0. 0.45 to the other side. Now give you 0. 0.7 minus 0. 0.45. That will be 0. 0.25. Then factor out probability of E2. Uh, that will be 1 minus 0. 0.45. So 1 minus 0.0, that will be 0.55. So you take it, you subtract, uh, if you divide it, 0.25 now divided by 0.55, that will give you 0.46 as probability of uh, E2. So we move to conditional probability. 
So given two events E1 and E2, the conditional probability that event E1 will occur, given that uh, another event E2 has already occurred, is written as a probability of E1 slash E2. Take note, what comes first is very important here. I mean that event E1 will occur, given that E2 will occur. So P1, probability of E1 slash E2. So probability of E1 slash E2 is, is given by this formula, E1 intersection of E2 over E2. You can easily show that, uh, given what we have done uh, before. But let's illustrate this with this example. A card is drawn from the usual pack of 52 cards. Uh, what is probably that it is a club, given that uh, it is from a black suit? That means we are looking for probably that uh, a picking of the cloud is a club, given that it is a black. But to even understand this, we need to know what is inside the pack of a card, the deck of card. So for the deck of card, there are four suits there. Uh, one of the, su the suits are spade. Spade is often called, also come in color black. Hats comes in color red. Diamond in color red and club comes in a color black. So in each of them, you have a haze. There is one. That's haze. It's one. Well, you have one black haze, one black cat, one black diamond, one black club. Then the king. There is one black king, one spade king, which is black. Then one heart king, which is red, one diamond. So just like that. Then you have the queen, the jack. Each of them is one, one for each of the suits. Then the number... Uh, 2 to 10, there will be 9 of them, 2 to 10, there are 9 of them, so the total in each of the suit is a 13, each of the suit you have 13, so 13 plus 13 plus, that will be 52, so that makes up the 52 in the card, so the probability, the question now says that, uh, the question was, we want to find probability of picking a club, given that uh, it's a black suit, it's from a black suit, so uh, in pick, probability of picking a black card, you know, there are two suits that are black. The, the two suits that are black are the are the spade and the club. So probably you know. So since there are thirteen and thirteen, that's twenty six. So probably of picking a black card is twenty six uh, over fifty two. Two times fifty two, that's half. And probably of picking a black club. That a black and a club is a uh, uh, thirteen over fifty two. No, a black a club a club is all the club is a black so you have 13 of them so 13 out of 52 so uh, clubs are often black so probability of picking a club given that it's a black uh it's going to be half uh, divide uh, one over four that probability of picking a club and a black that's one over four divided by one over two and that will give us a uh, one all over two half uh, if you illustrate this properly, uh, you get to see how the formula comes in. The probability of picking a club, you are picking the club out of the black suit. That means that uh, the black suit is itself is already, uh, and the, and the black suit itself is uh, one, is one all over two. So you are picking, probability of picking one, so you, the total is one over two. So it's just like you just keep giving like it's a black. I mean, you are picking among the black. You want to look for club among the black. So probability of the club out of all the black. So one all over four divided by one all over two. So that will give us uh, and that actually gives us the formula. Probability of club of one event given the other. The probability of the when the two event club and black divided by the black probability of the black so uh, let's do some work examples now uh, in this work example a marble is drawn at random from a box containing 10 red 20 white and 30 blue 30 blue and uh, 15 orange marbles so find probability that it is a uh, either orange or red it is neither blue nor red so solution now uh, some of some of the bubbles together 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus and that's 75 so uh, in the 75 and uh, the number of uh, probability of having red is 10 over 75 because there are 10 red probability of having white is 20 over 75 because there are 20 white 
probability of having blue is uh, 30 over 75 because there are 30 blue and probability of having orange is 15 over 75 because there are 15 orange if of having orange 15 over 75 there are 15 oranges orange marbles probability of having orange or red or is and so you had the two probability together that's probability of having orange 15 over 75 plus probability of having 